Well everyone, it's September 16, 2011. Just having a quick look at the earthquakes over the last few days. And as you can see, the first one of interest is uh, the 6.1 in the Aleutian Islands, Alaska. That was in September 14, 1810 UTC time. Okay, we're on the moon here, and we're looking at the Earth. And here's Alanin, and there's Saturn. As you can see, it's a bit of an alignment between the moon, Earth, Alanin, and Saturn. And that was the time of the first one of the string of earthquakes that we had. That was quickly followed by a 6.0. North New Zealand, in fact, that was listed as something higher than that yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that anymore. And then it's followed by a 6.2 Honshu, Japan. I think that was listed as a 6.3 yesterday. And there was a 6.5, I believe it was, when it was first listed, Cuba region, but it's now listed as a 5.1. Okay, so there's a heavy downgrade on that one. And that was the last of the sequence, seems to be this one in Fiji. 7.3 uh, which happened about 12 hours ago. As you can see on the earthquake tides and alignments charts this was the Alanin alignment here and uh, this is the beginning of the surge in earthquakes and then we hit uh, about 14 hours later we're still in this alignment and that was when it peaked and now I'd expect it to fall off until we hit the Jupiter alignment which will actually happen uh, later on the 16th. So let's take a quick look at the clocks and as you can see a few days ago we we're actually on a slight charge sequence uh, and that's indicated by the cube clock which is actually slowing. It started slowing on the 9th, 10th and with the earthquakes we have discharge and it jumps back up slightly. Of course this is minimal compared to what has happened in the past but it's still uh, observable and we were on a charge sequence again from about the 12th, 13th and then jumped up on the 14th with the, the first sequence of earthquakes and today we're actually charging again which is indicated by this slight decline and I guess that after the Jupiter alignment and the earthquake, subsequent earthquake, we should be, that, that clock should have jumped up slightly but this is very small compared to what we observed uh, just two or three weeks ago and of course it's minimal compared to what actually happened uh, on the third with this massive movement but I'll uh, talk more about that later and this is showing real time now so as you can see we're getting very close to this moon Jupiter alignment so the earthquake that I'm anticipating should actually occur any moment now and let's go to Stellarium and as you can see we're very close to this alignment it's more obvious than Stellarium and if we go to the USGS the live seismic servers and refresh this okay there's nothing showing yet this is the previous earthquake this is the Fiji earthquake the 7.2 that happened about 12 hours ago okay and it's quite a significant earthquake and it did move the seismographs all around the world uh, let's have a look at the Australian seismograph here this is a movement that went on for about three hours so it was quite a significant earthquake but this is like one of those world wobble events that I refer to. It's not just an earthquake isolated to um, just Fiji. It was moved the whole world. The whole Earth was moved with this earthquake. I've got a live seismograph from earlier today. As you can see, the other earthquakes in, in the sequence are also felt around the world. And that would have been... Let's pull up the... That is earthquakes. The other earthquake you're seeing, okay, the Fiji one was here. The other one showing on there is the combination of the Japan earthquake and the New Zealand earthquake, which happened uh, less than seven minutes apart. So they were registered within seven minutes of each other. As you can see, it's hard to tell from these seismographs which one was the New Zealand one, which one we're looking at this shaking here, it's hard to tell which one is the New Zealand one and which one is the Japan one. Seven minutes difference. So that's very close between those two earthquakes. Okay, so this is about 12 hours ago. This is the size of growth as it looked 12 hours ago. So it's very significant movement there. And if we look at the latest one, I'll just do another quick refresh. And this is as it looks right this moment. Still no sign of the earthquake I'm anticipating. 
but uh, I expect to see it within the next hour for sure. Okay, it's almost 8.30 p.m. UTC time. There's just been an earthquake off the coast of Japan. It was a 6.6. .6. And if we have a look on the map, let's see where it is. Okay, and we can look at the live seismic server. As you can see on the live seismic servers, it's just starting to show up around the world. Of course, in Japan, Beijing, it's showing up as a large earthquake here. And the Philippines definitely respond to that. This is looking like one of those worldwide wobble events in the making. Okay, this is starting to show up as a big movement all around the world. Some places it hasn't really got started yet. Definitely across the Pacific is a big, wow, a big movement here. Wow, oh, what's going on there? That's huge. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's showing eight o'clock there, and it, yeah, it's eight twenty. It's this is going to be a huge movement. I think it's time to get out the compass and see if the the Earth moves. That was a huge movement. Okay. So where was I? Okay, so what I had been looking at, why did it take so long? Because I'm trying to get the JPL website regarding this other comet, Girard. I'm trying to find out more about Comet Girard, which could account for some of these other anomalies, which just don't make any sense. It, on August 6th, was not too far from the Earth by the looks of it. August 6th, if we look back at the clocks, you'll see that on August 6th, stretch these clocks out a bit to make them easier to f find these dates. August 6th, beginning of a decline. Uh, what direction was the moon? Well, August 6th, I've got it up here. Perpendicular. August 6th, the moon was perpendicular to the sun, which was in alignment with Elnin, so I was calling that Elnin. Um, obviously, Gerard would be perpendicular to that alignment. So, yes, I think we can still call August 6th being the result of Elnin. But we've still got this anomaly here, this event that happened September 2nd, 3rd, 4th. There are several possibilities, of course, and one of them would be that this is when a common Elnin lost its tail, maybe as a result of a CME, as a got close to perihelion with the sun. Um, that's one possibility. You know, where else it could be something to do with the CW Leonis, which I still haven't had a chance to really look at in detail, but uh, if anyone really knows where CW Leonis is supposed to be at the moment, if it really is on the move, uh, it'd be interesting to find out where it's supposed to be. Um, another possibility is, of course, it's some other object that we haven't even thought about. Or, as I had previously suggested, it could be some sort of intervention by the CERN NASA crowd. Um, at this moment, I don't really know. Okay, let's go back to the USGS and just see if there's anything more can be seen with the seismic waves on this earthquake developing. Quick refresh. Okay, it's looking like a worldwide bubble event, but maybe not too bad. It hasn't stopped yet, but it's um, very significant. This has been going on all day long anyway. I don't think this is related. I mean, this has just been mostly volcanic or something going on there. But Kiritimati Island, Republic of Kiribati. Huge. Much bigger than the event that happened in Japan. Johnson Island, the same again. Well, there's Johnson Island's gone crazy.
So it started with, this is the earthquake in Japan, but this is what happened on Johnson Island. Okay, this is how these things obviously kick off. This is one of the reasons I was sort of holding off on this video as well, just to see the beginning of this. Because if you can catch the beginning of these events, you can see a lot more on these seismographs than you would actually in a couple of hours when it's all black. Once it's all black, you don't see anything. Okay, I'm going to stop this part of the video now and uh, set up a compass. Okay, just doing a quick refresh of the USGS website. Okay, it's just showing a, a second one in Japan, a 5.2. Go back to live seismic servers. Okay. Barbados. You can see this building, actually. Look at this. They're all building. Starting off small here, and then as time's progressed, larger and larger. Of course, in China's situation, it started off with the earthquake here, quick peak here, and it's declined. Quite interesting to watch this across the different regions. Okay, this is where I am. Okay, we didn't feel anything. Johnson Island, big movement, obviously it's declining again. So we had the big movement a couple of hours, well not a couple of hours, big movement about 20 minutes after the quake, and then an hour of movement following it. Let's see this one down here. Let's see what it's done. Okay, the Kiritimati Island what it's looking like now. So the quake started and then this seismic movement just built and built and now it's decaying away. It's very interesting to see that. So it looks like the event's over. It seems to be generally declining everywhere. But it, the biggest movement wasn't actually where the earthquake kicked off on. It's actually elsewhere in the Pacific. Okay, here's an image from my compass. Unfortunately, the macro focus wasn't working and I wasn't able to hold it steady enough, so I'll have to do better on that next time. So, these images are practically useless. However, I also took a photo of the moon, and here's Jupiter here. So, this is uh, the alignment that we're looking at. Um, it, I was anticipating the earthquake to actually happen about here, but it was fairly close. Okay, and there's been another earthquake in Japan, and this is uh, happened at 1908 UTC time, and I guess this is the movement here. Uh, this seismograph is obviously slightly away, this is in Japan, but it's slightly away from the epicenter. And if we have a look at the latest earthquakes, this is it listed here. I'll just do a refresh to see if there's any more. And there was. Another one, 5.6 off the coast of Japan. Let's have a quick look at the map. Okay, so we've got, well, they're going in a line out here. So this is the 6.6, the 6.2, and the 5.6. Okay, so I'll upload this, and uh, I think that'll be pretty much it for the moment. Um, it may be a continuation of this wobble event, but I think it's probably petering out. This is a refresh. I don't think it's going to be much more to see here. Okay, let's quickly scroll through. And Rarotonga is looking much like Wake Island, but maybe not as severe. Taiwan showing both of these. Well, actually, this would this would have been the first one, and I guess this is showing the second one now. Okay, and Wake Island, which always gets it big. And of course, Republic of Kiribati. And that's pretty much faded away.
but there was a big movement when it was moving. Scott Base. Okay, we've got Scott Base in Antarctica showing the movement as well. Okay, that's interesting to look at. Okay, so that'll be that for this video, and um, my next video will be covering pole shifts in the past, and this will be in the form of uh, the early solstice in 2010 that it was uh, videotaped. Okay, thank you for watching.